Hi folks, welcome to chapter 13 of the Tormach uh, PC and C1100 video series. Today we are going to tackle changing out the uh, uh, standard R8 drawbar with the power drawbar. I purchased that new with the mill, but it doesn't come installed, so they sent a long set of instructions and um, the parts when we're going to dive in and see how this goes. First step is to remove this piece here, which normally keeps you from closing the door if you have the spindle lock bar um, engaged on the drawbar. The Next step is to remove the uh, spindle lock and all the little uh, bolts and springs around it. I'm going to throw all of them in a Ziploc bag just to keep them together, knowing uh, that uh, someday in the future I'll probably want this for some uh, reason that's unclear to me now. There's a dowel pin that you have to remove, which the manual or instructions say can be difficult. I used just a pair of vice grips and was able to wiggle it out okay. Um, they say if you can't get it out that you can just cut it off. Next step is to loosen the four socket head cap screws around the motor. The front three or the fr that you can see are easy. Tormach even includes the hex key for all those. The back left though is very difficult to reach. They recommend using a socket and an extension handle with a hex driver for the socket set. I don't own those hex drivers, at least for this, this size, which is a 5 16th. So I do have the ratchet set with the extension. So what did I do? I just took a 5 16th um, hex key, happens to be one that has the ball end, which is helpful in this situation because it's a little easier if you don't have to go a straight 90 degree angle. And I just cut it off, which um, you know, this is by no means worthless. It's obviously not the same as an L shape, but I can buy a new one of these later in McMaster for, I'm guessing, you know, a dollar. Okay, it's a little tricky to see, but I just wanted to show. I've got the hex key on the sort of done my, did it myself uh, extension and driver. And now it's actually pretty easy to uh, turn, to get this screw loose. With the four bolts removed, I rotated the motor 90 degrees so that the box, electrical box is now facing the left. Here are two good tips. If you're going to use a um, hex key inside a socket driver like I am, um, tape the two together. That way this piece doesn't fall out and uh, be annoying or worst case damage your table, which by the way, it's not a bad idea to put a piece of wood over the table to keep it from having falling objects ding it. And then the other even bigger tip is the corner screw becomes quite annoying to feed in there once the motor is rotated back. So put that screw in when the motor is still in the original position and then rotate it back and then the screw is resting in the hole and you can just feed your extension driver down in there and screw it in. Next step, remove the uh, Phillips head screw that was right there and is now removed. And then you use the Tormach supplied spanner wrench. And as you can see, you just want to take this nut off. Time to dive into the bag of new parts for the power drawbar. The first one is this new spindle nut. It just threads on. Okay, next I tightened the set screw down. Then I dropped in the drawbar, which as you'll see has a bushing and three springs. You hand tighten it, and you put a the TTS collet in the in the R8 chuck, and then you put a TTS holder in there. It says in the manual to hand tighten or finger tighten. Then it says to tighten about two turns. I can only get there's that's about it's two thirds of a turn, and that's about another third of a turn. So I can only get one third of a turn in. That's what I'm going to run with. Next up is this guy. They call it the um, eccentric mounting post. They tape the parts together here so they don't separate, but it's just a socket head cap screw and a washer, and it goes in this hole, and it says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand tighten it so it doesn't fall out, but it says, do not tighten the screw at this time. Next up is the actual air cylinder, which you then slide this hole over the eccentric post that we just screwed in like so 
you then adjust this hex screw, uh, cap screw here so that the cylinder is roughly level, which it is, and then you need to make sure with the cylinder in the retracted position, which it is by default when there's no pressure hooked up, there should be a small gap between the hex screw and the uh, drawbar. This is pretty cool. You need to make sure that the um, hex head in the draw in the power cylinder is centered over the draw bar, and you do that by using the same wrench you have to loosen the regular draw bar, and you turn the eccentric post until it is lined up, and then you tighten down the socket head cap screw, which locks the eccentric post in the position that's just right. The next step is to grab this piece out of the uh, parts bag and you just install this right where the leveling screw is. Um, Tormox, the instruction manual says you need to use a number seven drill and then tap this for quarter 20. So when I first read that, I thought, oh, that's not fun. I've got to you know, drill and tap a part on the casting of the headstock and you, know, you don't want to screw that up. But it um, ends up that my mill already has that hole there. So I guess it's just a question of uh, how old your mill is, but hopefully for those viewing this in the future, that hole will already be there, ready to go. Okay, as you can see, I've taken the cover panel off the Z-axis stepper motor. I've got the sort, of, the sort of the brains of the power drawbar here. I taped together the blue, um, two blue wires, and I'm going to feed them down a hole through there and into the electrical cabinet. Okay, folks, you can see the Z-axis or the um, brains of the power drawbar up near the Z-axis stepper. Um, this process took me about um, an hour, which is a little bummer, bit of a bummer. Um, and that process was pulling these two blue wire cables down through a small hole um, in, uh, in, inside the Z-axis stepper box and out this hole here. The main reason this took me so long is that unfortunately, as you can see on my mill, the, um, the folks at the factory or foundry did not properly size that hole. They left too much of it back there, which meant there's not enough room with these cables to see what's going on. I had to pull these two blue things off the cable covers, which I didn't really want to do, but I don't think that's going to be a problem getting those put back. But what I had to do was I had to get help. I had to use, I took a coat hanger with, um, with a, um, with some washers on top of it, fed that up into the top, then used a magnet to grab this thing, then attached the string, pulled the string down through with the uh, blue wires attached. So in the end, it worked out okay. It just took me a while to get there and, and I needed help. So a um, little bit of a bummer that I think that process would have gone a lot quicker had that hole been correctly sized. And on that note, I should mention that if you are doing this without the side panels installed, I think if you take the panel off behind the mill that's right here, it's kind of hard to point to it, I think that would open up the back of the uh, column, which would make this a two-minute job. I did not want to take off, go through the labor of taking off the uh, panels here. They're siliconed in, but um, that's just another idea for anyone who's putting one of these. All right, time to wire the electronics up. Not as difficult, in my opinion, as the manual makes it sound. You basically have a 105 wire, it used to be over here. You move the top wire over to a free pair, and a pair is a vertical pair. You check with a multimeter, there's continuity between the top and the bottom. And then the, that existing 105, you pair with the new blue wire from the drawbar labeled 105 that you just pulled through the spindle. Then you label the old bottom 105 with an A. And then next to it, you add the new blue power draw bar 105A. And then on the top, you just put the jumper that's included in the Ziploc bag that jumps these two together. So these four 105s are all hooked together. Okay, screwed the cover on um, the electrical connection, put the cable carrier on, ran the cable for the foot jack, which you see on the ground there, and then I have also um, gone ahead and attached this little black piece here into the pre-drilled hole, which will be for a zip tie to pick up the slack of these cables. And then for these, that's labeled bottom. So that will just, these are great. You just push them in and they're self 
holding. Same thing with the top. To release it, you push this in and then you can pull the cable out. Power drawbar is done. Um, I had an issue last night where there was water discharging out of this hole. I talked to Tormach today. They said that was a hopefully a temporary problem with their um, sort of a quality control or some type of a test. I cycled it a few times for their instructions. It's now working. I press on the foot pedal. Tool comes out. Put the tool back in. Lift up, and it retracts. I did do some adjusting per the instruction manual of tightening uh, the drawbar until the tool holder releases just correctly. And I also adjusted the two gold colored valves that you see here, which have to do with how quickly the cylinder compresses and then how quickly it retracts. Um, that's all for this video. Wanted to keep or wrap this up, um, but really excited to have this. Also wanted to let you know that I've got a small compressor right now. It's only about eight gallons and it cycles well over a dozen times before it has to move back or charge up from 90 back to 120 PSI. Thanks.